Hello, I'm John Durrant, and in this video I want to talk about synchronising time to the Pico W real-time clock. The Pico W is an internet-connected device via Wi-Fi. I want to use the SNTP service, Simple Network Time Protocol, to be able to set the real-time clock on the Raspberry Pi Pico W. This is going to be from a C or C++ environment using FreeRTOS for multitasking on the Pico W. So very useful if you're using your device to control a peripheral on a schedule, perhaps lighting or similar. Or you just need to communicate back with measurements of temperature. It is taken and give a timestamp against each measurement. The goals of this video is to look at SNTP and the challenges of bringing time to the Pico W. We will use the LWIP library, which is shipped as an external library within the SDK to provide SNTP then build a very simple example to print out the date and time. Let's get started with the basics. SNTP is Simple Network Time Protocol. It's used to synchronize the clock of networks of computers, originally developed for small computers and microcontrollers in 1992. It requires less memory and complexity than NTP, which attempts to synchronize clocks by slowly adjusting them to bring them into line. Instead, with SNTP, we just shift them, which isn't ideal for all applications. SNTP is used in applications where precise clock synchronization is not critical, as it does not adjust for network delay. Using the TCP IP protocol suite, or more specifically, UDP across port 123. Basically, devices ISCA server providing the SNTP service for the time, and it provides back in seconds since epoch, the 1st of January 1900, midnight in UTC. It really is that simple. Our Pico W just needs to send the UDP request and they get back a UDP response with the seconds since epoch. Though, like everything on the internet, things don't always work, and so there is a good amount of error handling too. SNTP ignores time zones. It provides the time in UTC, Universal Coordinated Time, as you can see on this map, kindly provided by rawpixel.com. UTC is the same place as the Greenwich Meridian Line. It is therefore the same as GMT, Greenwich Mean Time. Greenwich Mean Time is a time zone, and UTC is a time standard, so they're not quite the same thing. Provided we know the time zone, for our Pico W, we can derive the time from UTC. I'm only 11.7 kilometers from the Greenwich Meridian line, and therefore my offset from UTC is zero. San Francisco operates in Pacific Standard Time, which is UTC minus eight. Kiev in Ukraine is located in Eastern European time zone, and is UTC plus two. Not all time zones are whole hour adjustments. Delhi in India is five and a half hours off of UTC. But that isn't the oddest. The Chatham Isles of New Zealand have a time zone of 12 hours and 45 minutes. Not only is that 45 minute adjustment odd, but it's also more than 12 hours adjustment, which I would have expected to be on the negative side, minus 11 hours, 15 minutes. Anyway, the point is that we can adjust from UTC to any time zone. Some locations also have seasonal time zone adjustments, what we call daylight saving. Daylight saving is within countries' control and not really a time zone. The dates they operate are not consistent between countries. This is a bigger challenge for our Pico than we can solve in this video, so let's just stick to getting UTC and adjusting to time zone. Computers and indeed our Pico W hold more than one time. Let's talk about the larger computers for a second, be they servers, on the internet, or indeed your laptop. These hold the time since the computer booted up, normally in microseconds. Time since epoch, and each operating system has its own epoch. Linux has an epoch which is the 1st of January 1970. Windows uses the 1st of January 1601. Whichever epoch the operating system uses, it allows it to compute UTC, 
then as it has a time zone set to calculate the derived local time. On top of this, it then runs some date rules updated in the operating system patches to calculate the daylight saving time. Our Pico W, or at least the base level services provided by the Pico's SDK, are a little simpler. They provide us with a time since boot in microseconds. The time since epoch is managed by the real time clock module of the SDK. This gives us the local time for a specific time zone or UTC, our choice which we set it to. There are no standard utilities for daylight saving. For embedded or IoT devices, which may be located all around the world, it's quite common for devices to just use UTC so that the timestamps are all comparable. Local time is really just a human interface requirement. This is a good place to tell you about my sponsor for this video, PCBWay. PCBWay are your go-to solution for PCB manufacturing, 3D printing, CNC, sheet metal fabrication, and injection molding, all your maker needs. So when I am designing my Pico W project boards, I can upload them and get quality PCB produced by PCBWay. I tried the website out with a PCP design for the circuit I'm using for this video, just a Pico W with an LED and resistor. Designing the board in KiCap, I could export the gerb files and upload them to PCBWay's site, then see my design in the preview before I pay and those real PCB boards are shipped. No more need to fudge it with prototyping boards. So go check out PCB Way. Let's look at the libraries and examples for syncing time to our Pico W. I'm going to focus on the Pico W SDK Wi-Fi stack and libraries. So we have the real time clock within the Pico SDK. The Pico SDK then uses the external CYW43 library to manage the onboard Wi-Fi controller and the LWIP to provide a lightweight IP stack on top of this. There are several optional application parts of the LWIP library, one of which is SNTP. It is this SNT application that we will use for our example. I'm going to do this example using FreeRTOS project. That's because as soon as I want to connect to the outside world from my Pico W, I really need real-time capabilities to allow me to manage the protocols. FreeRTOS is a great library for doing this. With FreeRTOS kernel, I can put network connections to provide HTTP or MQTT or Tailnet network connection services into my applications. Because I have the protocols running in the background and looking after by the concurrent tasks provided by FreeRTOS kernel. The LWIP SNTP app is a small set of functions. A few more than I've shown here, but these four are the main functions. We can initialize to start the SNTP process up. This will then run in the background, regularly updating time. We can halt the process with a stop command. We need to set a mode of the SMP to work in. We will talk a little more about this in a bit. We also need to provide the details for some SNTP servers on the internet that we will use. These should be nearby um, so as to keep the impact of network time delays down. Our process for setting up SNTP is to set the mode to poll mode. So we poll to request SNTP responses. Set the SNTP servers we need and initialize the SNTP process. To get the results, we have to provide a callback function. This is provided through setting the SNTP set system time definition in the SNTP options include file. We provide this callback function to call with the result, the number of seconds since epoch. The Pico's SDK real time clock has three useful functions for us. We need to initialize the real time clock first, then set its initial value, then we can get the date and time at any point. The real time clock uses the date time underscore t structure. Our simple example will blink the LED on GPIO0 just so we can see that everything is working okay. It will connect to Wi-Fi, set up the SNTP and use that to run the real-time clock 
then print out the date and time from the real-time clock. We will print this to the serial over USB, so we can use a utility like Minicom to see the Pico W show the time. So our circuit schematic is just the Pico W with the LED connected via a 75 ohm resistor. On the breadboard, I'm pulling ground onto the top ground bar, then connecting to one side of the LED. The other side goes via the resistor to GPIO zero. Code for the example in this video is on GitHub. I will include the URL into the comments. To build the example, create a folder called build and in that folder, issue the command cmake dot dot and then make. The binary file can be copied to the Pico W using boot select or SWD approaches. The build process assumes that two environment variables are defined to provide the Wi-Fi SID and the Wi-Fi password. I prefer this to putting these in config files, which may accidentally end up on GitHub. Our example has three components. Blink Agent is just a free RTOS task built as a C++ class to flash the LED. Wi-Fi Helper contains a code to connect to Wi-Fi and synchronize our SNTP time to the real-time clock. Main program will drive all this. It contains the free RTOS data and boot task threads. This will start Blink, connect to Wi-Fi, configure SNTP, and then print out the data and time. The main boot task will do all the setup work. This starts up our Blink agent, then connects to Wi-Fi. It will set up our SNTP servers. I'm using some UK located servers here. You can do a quick Google search to find NTP close to you. I'm setting the time zone offset at zero. I could give a secondary parameter here as minutes offset, but this defaults to zero. Then I'm going to start SNTP synchronizing. We'll then pull back the data and time from RTC every three seconds or so. Let's have a look at what the Wi-Fi helper is doing. Add server is simply calling the SNTP set server name function. I'm hiding the complexity of the index of the server and holding a local reference for this within the Wi-Fi helper. Set time zone also just holds a local reference that we can use later to add as an offset. Note, I am allowing both positive and negative offsets. Also that we have an hour and minute offset. The minute is defaulted to zero in the definition. When we start the synchronization, we initialize the real time clock, set the mode to be pole and start the process. The real work is in providing the callback function that will take the time as seconds since epoch. It will then use a GM time function to convert this to the standard date and time structure, TM. The Pico W's real time clock does not use the TM structure though, so we will have to convert it to a date time underscore T structure before initializing the real time clock. We have some configuration to do for LWIP to enable it to use SNTP. This is part of the library port configuration. I've placed this in the folder port LWIP. This header file configures the size of the buffer and the modules to use for LWIP. For SNTP, we need to turn the service on and allow it to use DNS to find the SNTP servers. We need to tell it what our callback function is. Note the way the LWIP is written, I could not provide a static function within a C++ class to LWIP as the callback function. So we have a very simple C function in the way that just calls our Wi-Fi helper callback function. We also need to make sure we have one more system timeout available than the default on LWIP, or this won't work properly without services being run. This took me quite a while to work out that I've missed doing this step, so one to be aware of. We will also use an LWIP C make file to include into our top level make file. This will define a C make library called LWIP port. This library will help us find the LWIP include files and build 
the SNTP application. So our Pico W device is sitting on the breadboard and flashing away. Out of the serial interface over USB, we can see what is happening. It connects to Wi-Fi, then starts printing out the date and time. By the magic of the internet, this has been set to my local time. Oh look, it's time for coffee. So the Pico W internet services don't always feel very easy to get working. Actually, SNTP using the LWIP library is very straightforward. What we lacked was some good examples for the Pico W. Hopefully, I've provided at least one. Certainly, this is great to have the time available for controlling applications and for IoT. Please like and subscribe for more content from me. Talking of which, if you're interested in building IoT applications on the Pico W or learning more about free Aftos kernel, then take a look at my courses on Udemy. I'll put the links in the video description. Until next time, thank you for watching and remember to like and subscribe.